Hello, welcome to Flower Juice. My name's John McDonald, and today we're going to make a simple traditional table arrangement for going on a long dining room table. So this is the type of table that a lot of people might have at home that would seat up to kind of six people. Uh, so we don't want to make anything that's too big. We don't want to make anything that's too fussy or uh, fancy. We just want something that's a simple decoration for going in the centre of the table. But ideally, making something that's one unit means that you can easily remove it if you want to put food into the centre of the table. So what I've got is I've got a range of simple flowers that anyone could get. We've got some roses, a lily, some little santini croissants. We've got some eustoma and wax flower and some different foliage. And as a base, we've just got this simple plastic tray. Now this is a tray that's designed to take one block of floral foam. Uh, this is actually the biofoam, so this is a foam that's designed to disintegrate after six months or 50% of it will disintegrate after six months. So we can put this block in here, but in a way this is a little bit big. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut this in half. Um, the problem with having more foam is that you end up needing more materials to hide that foam and we don't want to make something that's actually really clumsy. So what I'm going to do is, this is still exactly the right size for the tray, but it gives us a little bit of space actually uh, and a little bit of room to water the tray as well. So what I'm going to do is we're just going to get rid of any excess water and I'm just going to use a little bit of pot tape just to secure. Now we could do a bit here and a bit there, if this is for home use, then there's no reason why you even need to tape it, to be honest. But one in the middle would be fine. Uh, pot tape is a really handy thing to have. If you don't have pot tape, you could just use sellotape. And actually now you can get a pot tape that is like a clear tape. So that's really handy if you're using glass. So essentially we've got our foam in our dish and it's quite secure. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our greenery first and create a base for our flowers. So this is French Ruscus and it's got a beautiful shape. Um, now the good thing with this is that we can use this to create the length that we want. And this is a nice material for just splitting down into different units. So if I take that end, now I'm going to use the other one so that we end up with two tips. So this tip can come this way. Problem is once you cut it, you end up with pieces that are good for working within the design, but they are like blunt units. So they're not so good for making an end. It's okay, but you, you have that, that damaged bit. So I'm just breaking this down into little sections and just putting that through our design. So really I'm going length, length, and then just working across this. So in a way, this is a bit like making a, a big spray of flowers, uh, except we can make it narrower uh, and it's obviously on a smaller scale. When we tend to do like a big spray of flowers, we tend to make it wider in the middle and more diamond shaped if you're looking at it from above. And also actually you can come up quite high with a spray would be the traditional kind of uh, dimensions that you would work to. With this, we don't necessarily need to come up. We can make this more like a bar of flowers actually. So essentially we've got our base off the Ruscus. I've got some nice leather leaf fern, and this is quite a popular commercial greenery. And I'm just gonna bring that in. Now again, you can split this down into little units. So we just took that and we've made a top and two pieces here. So we can pop in our little bits. Any little broken bits just take off. And even putting, you know, one upside down actually can look quite good because you're getting a, a contrast in, in, you know, the actual fern. Depends what materials you've got. I would say if you were doing this at home, just see what foliage you've got. You don't have to buy foliage. You can just source some when you're out with the dog or you could uh, take it from the garden. Uh, but just be careful that you're taking it from somewhere that you're allowed to take it and that you're not picking anything that's poisonous neither. So that leather leaf is just giving us a little bit of volume and contrast as well with the 
foliage that we've used already. So again, I'm just splitting this down. Now, there's kind of different ways to work when you're making arrangements. Uh, but traditionally, a lot of people start with the foliage and then add the flowers because the foliage will give you a dimension to work within and that it makes it very easy. Now, this is sticking out a wee bit, so I'm just going to shorten that. So essentially, we've got our base with our ruscus and our leather leaf. Just to create a little bit of change of texture, I've got a little bit of salal. Uh, so this is like a Gaultheria. And again, I'm just popping a wee bit of this in to create a change in texture, a, a contrast in our foliage. And that basically means that your arrangement will look more natural. Because these leaves are a little bit bigger, we're going to keep them quite short and more to the centre of our design. So that bigger, heavier leaf looks more balanced when it's within the arrangement rather than away out here, it, it's a little bit big. But in the centre, it helps just bring that visual weight into the centre. Now, I also have some Aspidistra. Now, we can take this and we can just fold over a couple of times and pierce through. And this is quite a nice way of giving us a little bit of a interesting effect as well. And we can put one either side. But really, foliage-wise, just use what you've got. You don't need to get fancy. Um, but those little bit bigger leaves just take a little bit of weight into the middle. So I think what we'll do next is we'll use our roses. So I've got this beautiful lilac-y coloured rose. And um, what I want to do is I want to find two that are smaller. So this one's a bit smaller. And we're going to bring these out longwise. And this is really bringing us to the dimensions that we want our flowers to sit within. And then with our next roses, so I've got five roses here. I'm going to do one to that side and one to this side. And then we're going to do one in the middle. So I don't want this to sit up high. I want this to sit lower so that the whole thing is more a little bit like a bar of flowers. Actually, if you're struggling for foliage, we've got a little bit of foliage on here that we could have used. So don't ever be stuck. So essentially, we've spaced our roses out across the whole design. And now we can look at our other flowers. So I don't tend to use lilies a lot because they're so easily crushed. But this is an Asiatic lily and uh, it's got beautiful big open flower. So I just wanted to use these for here and uh, we can bring them in and just really put them back to back. And this bud will open, so we can put that more in the center. And just to balance it, on this side we'll put our buds as well, the rest of our buds. So essentially what we've got is we've got two focal flowers and we've used the buds that create a line here. So we've got a line of roses and we've got a line of lily as well. So our next flower that we're going to use is the little Santinis. And I just think these are really cute. Um, they're like a little button croissant. And we can just, again, look at our stem, split them down into maybe a little unit like this, where we've got two. Uh, then we can split this one. Now, so what I've got here is I've got the final bit where we've got a long piece. So this is what I want to keep for going out at the ends. Now you're thinking, oh, this is ugly. But what we can do is we can basically put that in. And as we add more materials, we can cover that. So we've taken the flower out, but it's still able to access the foam and uh, have that source of water. And just add them. Now I've, I've picked a range of materials for using for this. Um, 
just because I've got things in my bucket doesn't mean that we have to use them all. And that's quite important. Sometimes it's better just to add what you're needing at that moment and hold a little bit back and see if you actually need it. Because if you don't need it, you'll just end up putting everything in and it'll start to look really cluttered. So we don't want to do that. Another point to think about with our design is that we want everything to really feel like it's radiating from point within the center of the arrangement. So there's this point and our rose comes here, our other roses come here, the other roses go here. So we've got them all looking like they've come from a central place. And that's a really good thing to keep in mind as you're creating your design. You don't want things to just kind of pop up here and pop up there and then it looks like they're disconnected. Uh, this is going to give it a little bit of harmony. So this is a great material. This is a flower called wax flower. And what's great with wax flower is again, it's small. So it's going to give us a contrast with the other materials that we've used. And it's got some really beautiful branching shapes. So we can split this down and uh, bring that in and really use that to good effect. It also has a nice smell and a nice look. But we can break it down into quite a lot of little bits. It's got a nice straight stem as well. Or a nice firm stem so we can uh, we can put that into the foam quite easily. adding this. If you had a really, really long table, there's no reason why you couldn't make two or three of these and space them out along the length of the table. You could then add things like a candelabra or candles in between. So you could really build up quite a nice run of flowers without having to make a solid run of flowers. You can just have the units that you're making uh, and go from there. Now this was a little bit of foliage that we had. I'm not quite sure what the name is, but it looks like a, a flame bush. And I just liked the contrast of this flower as well as the foliage. So we can add a little bit of that again, just to create another element of material and it's that it's that range of materials that will make something look natural if you tend to use a very limited selection you're going to end up with something that looks a little bit artificial uh, or a little bit commercial whereas if you can add even just a few little bits of garden material you'll create something that's much more much more homely and much more of the moment now to finish, I've got some beautiful lisianthus, and this is a flower that's uh, lisianthus or eustoma. It likes the heat, it likes warm conditions, but it's also a really good flower for breaking down into little units. And we can get a lot of usage when we're doing arrangements with this type of flower. So, just to show you, we've added a lot of interest into this. We've still got our line of roses, our line of lilies. We've added the colour throughout with the croissants. And now we can really just work our way through the design with our eustoma and uh, bring in that colour. Now you could work in the same way. So we started rose, rose. You could do the same with your other materials. Just work from the outside in or you can work from the inside out. But what I would suggest is that you find a way that you enjoy working and just work maybe in a methodical way. Another good point with a table arrangement is to be careful of this area lower down. It's very easy to add a lot of material up top, but when people are sitting down, they're actually going to be looking in sideways. So we want to make sure that we add a flower, add enough material that we're not looking at a plastic dish and some gaps. 
that we are actually looking at a nice design both from the side and from above. And if you're putting something in and you find that it breaks, just re recut it, redo it. There's no point in putting it in and it's broken and it's not getting any moisture. It's not actually um, being looked after. So as I said at the beginning, this is quite a straightforward kind of table arrangement. Now we're getting the effect of the colors that we're using here and the flowers that we're using here. If you use different flowers, you're gonna get a different effect. So we could just as easily have used uh, spring flowers at the start of the year. Uh, we could use different colors, uh, would give a different effect as well. So you can start to play with the materials that you're using to get the effect that you want, because ultimately you're creating it, you're in control. So just a wee one. And then really as a final thing, what you wanna do is just have a check that you're happy with what you've done. So here we've got a nice design that looks the same from both sides. I'm looking here and I'm thinking there's a gap. So we can just bring in another little bit of eustoma or even another little bit of the wax flower and just fill that in. And the thing is, if you've got a little flower left, there's no reason why you couldn't just do a couple of little bud vases or even a napkin flower like that laid on a napkin would look really nice with this as your main table flower. So you can tie it all in and make it a little bit more special. So essentially that's the way to make a simple table arrangement that's quite traditional but quite nice to make and it's, it's an enjoyable piece that anyone will uh, like looking at when they come for dinner. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you've got any questions, pop them into the comments below. And um, if you want to keep up to date with all our videos, then click here to subscribe. And if you tap that bell, you'll get notifications of our videos. What we try and do is aim to put out a video every Tuesday. So keep that in mind and we look forward to seeing you for our next video.